welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about two options on making shelf pin holes in your cabinetry. I'm gonna show you the option, which is actually very expensive, but it is very productive, and it's completely dustless, and it's very, very accurate, and I use it all the time. However, I'm gonna show you the other option, which is much cheaper, still very accurate, it's not dustless, I can tell you that. There is some cleanup afterwards, but it will get the job done. And so what I've done is um, on this cabinet right here to my right, I have the shelf pin holes already set because I use the 30 LR32 system from Festool that I always use for the past few years. And in this cabinet here, I intentionally left it without the shelf pin holes. And I completely assembled it so I can show you the jig that I used to use and I still from time to time use also, but which is a very, very affordable option. And it is probably something that more people are going to uh, opt into instead of the LR32 system like I have. Okay, so you've seen me in the past, in my last couple of years in the videos I'm doing cabinetry and built-ins, I use the Festool router with this adapter plate, which is the known as the LR32 system, based off 32 millimeter cabinets system, which is worldwide. These are the um, the guide bars that allow me to get uh, the perfect amount of distance from the edges of the cabinets and the back of the cabinet to make those shelf pin holes 37 millimeters from the edge and from the back of the cabinet so that you have 37 millimeter spacing, which is uh, the standard for that. Uh, it also is 37 millimeters, also the standard for the hinges uh, to be put in for the uh, concealed hinges. So as you can see, all this stuff is all based on a worldwide system, and that's why they call it the LR32 system. Uh, cabinetry is based on 32 millimeters, and um, everything is uh, basically a balanced panel at 32 millimeters. So whatever is divisible by 32. I know that sounds a little weird when I say that, you know, 37 millimeters from the front for the hinges and for the shelf pins, but that's just the way it is. I don't know the math on that one and how they came up with that, but the 32 millimeter system is basically for everything else being balanced. So basically with this, um, with this guide rail, you can see it has the holes and that is not for uh, drilling through. It's actually for the guide plate of the system to ride on with this little um, pin inside there. That drop pin goes into that hole and then it locks in and then you plunge the router down with the five millimeter bit and you plunge down nine millimeters which is half of the width of 18 millimeter plywood. So then the shelf pins fit right in there. I'm using five millimeter uh, shelf pins, you can get them in quarter inch as well. So if you were to use this system here, which is very expensive, but if you are a professional like me and you do this all the time, this is a great option because I'm telling you right now, it's completely dustless. You will make perfectly bored holes that were neat and clean. There was no chipping out or anything like that. And it will suck up all the dust because of the dust collection that's hooked up to the route. Now, the more affordable option is a jig that I've used for years before I got into the Festool system, and that is just this jig. And I'm going to be posting all the links in the description uh, for both of these systems here, and you can choose which one you want. Now, this has onboard storage here. It has a, a drill bit, spring-loaded drill bit that sits in this hole. And then as it centers itself in that hole, so it's almost like a self-centering bit, like a fixed bit, you put it into that hole and then you push the drill bit in, you plunge it and it plunges in uh, by you setting this. Uh, it has a stop collar on there for depth. You set that and it gives you the perfect amount. Now, why does it have two of the storage systems for drill bits? Well, that's because uh, you can get a five millimeter or a quarter inch I have both. I have the five millimeters sitting over there in the drill, ready to go, and that goes in here. Now with this system here, uh, you have your indexing is for the quarter inch holes. You index there, five millimeters you can index right here. And what you do is you place this inside the cabinet while it's pre-made, like you, you have it already assembled, you can still use this. If you don't, you can still use this anyway. And you don't have to drill every one of the holes. You can just select how many holes you want to drill. You don't want your cabinet to look like Swiss cheese either from top to bottom. You can't put a shelf all the way to the top. You can't put it all the way at the bottom. So why not just take like a good seven in the middle and then you just select those. I have the drill bit chucked up in the drill and I have my template or my jig, I should call it. And I have my five millimeter shelf pins 
Now I have one out separately here because what I'm gonna do is, you see how this on the plate, you may not get this on camera, but it says right here 37 millimeters. We wanna be 37 millimeters away from the back of the panel and also from the front of the edge here of the cabinet. So I'm just gonna buff this up against here and I'm gonna count up one, two, three, four, five holes. I'm gonna start my first hole at the five mark right there. Just like that, I have my first hole drilled. Now what I'm gonna do is move the jig up to where I have the indexing hole. Put on the five millimeter and I'm gonna stick the shelf pin in there. And what that's gonna do is it's actually going to hold the jig in place up here so I can drill the rest of my holes. Okay, so now that's an indexing pin. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm now gonna drill seven holes. Now you can also do this with the cabinet laying down as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp it to the MFT. Okay, now you can see there's all dust inside the cabinet here and that's why I tell you it's not a dustless operation. Also in the holes, that's why the LR32 is not only faster, but it's cleaner. Okay, so I'm move the jig. Now you can see we have our first set of the shelf pin holes. And now we're ready to drill the second set over here, 37 millimeters away. And we're gonna get it exactly in the same orientation that we have these. Okay, quick tip, make sure you clean the sawdust out from the side here because you're gonna be referencing the bottom of the cabinet again with the jig. So now I just flipped the jig. We had it in this orientation right here, 37 millimeters. We still need it to be 37 millimeters away. So this says 64, but with this block right here, it actually spaces from here to here, 37 millimeters. The 64 millimeters is to the edge. So we're gonna put it in just like that, bring it down to the bottom so that it references the bottom. And then we are going to count up how many holes we had for this one. We started our first hole, one, two, three, four, five. So bring that down to the bottom, count up, hold this jig in place like this, just by hand is fine. One, two, three, four, five, and we draw it out. And now in the same orientation here, we're gonna bring up to the five millimeter for the indexing pin. We're gonna put the shelf pin in there. Just like that. Take your indexing pin out. Now you have both sides completely parallel to each other. <clears throat> then you know that when you put these shelf pins in, you're gonna have your holes in the correct orientation for the shelf and everything is gonna be level when you put it in. I laid it on its side just to show you that it's actually easier to do it this way. I had that one already standing up and it was a rather large cabinet, so rather than wrestle it around, because I am by myself all the time working on these cabinets, it's just easier to just leave it in place and do it like that. But we're gonna maintain the same hole spacing and everything that we did on that cabinet. So this is the bottom. So I'll turn it like this so that you can see the inside. I'm gonna be referencing the bottom and we're gonna do, the technique is gonna be exactly the same. So we're gonna take the jig, the 37 millimeter side, put it down like this flat and we're gonna hit it against the bottom corner there. Then we're gonna count up five, one, two, three, four, five, put my finger right there and I'm gonna hold it in place and drill downwards. This is easier because I'm not fighting the cabinet moving side to side by pushing in this direction and it wants to move horizontally sliding on the bench so I don't have to clamp it. So a better option than to keep drilling these out and trying to get the sawdust out of the way is just grab your vacuum. Don't, don't suck up a shelf pin. For the price, I mean, if you're not doing that many, uh, if you're building kitchens repeatedly and built-ins and you're doing a lot of it, I don't recommend getting a jig like this. However, if you're just a weekend warrior or a hobbyist, a DIYer, and you want to maybe add some shelves, adjustable shelves to your existing cabinets, then you can definitely get away with something like this. Not really a bad jig. And for the money, it does what it's supposed to do. So you really can't go wrong. Shelf pins are all drilled out. The holes, the pins are in. And you can see I already put this shelf in right there. And now I cut this shelf to match the 
other cabinet and you basically can put it wherever you want. These are adjustable and give yourself about a millimeter on each side of room so that the shelf easily comes in and out without binding up in the cabinet. Especially since when you install the cabinets, they're going to rack a little bit when you screw it into the wall while you're plumbing and leveling everything when you are installing these. So just make sure that you give yourself a little breathing room. Uh, so it turned out good. Uh, Honestly, I still like the Festool LR32 system. I know it's expensive, but it's something that I use every day. So for me, from a production standpoint, it makes sense. For you, it might not. So simple uh, jigs like this, you know, and you have the options of getting the drill bit for a quarter inch or the five millimeter pins. You know, either one's up to you. I use the five millimeter pins because I use a five millimeter carbide uh, bit with the LR32 system with a plunge router that I plunge it down into the work piece to make the holes. Okay guys, well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. If you are looking for this particular shelf pin jig, I will post a link in the description. That's an affiliate link. I'm in a bit of a bind right now with the time crunch. I really gotta get this kitchen done, so I really can't film the whole entire thing. So little bits and pieces like this, I hope will help you. I've already done a cabinet series before. Yes, it hasn't been a whole kitchen, but it was for built-ins, which, and uh, the bar cabinet building series. Uh, another one was uh, bedroom built-ins. That was uh, just about the size of a kitchen maybe uh, about a year and a half ago. So I have plenty of videos for you guys for cabinet building and there's plenty more to come. I will be able to film the entire kitchen build in my new house. So don't worry, that is coming. I will be filming all of the trim and everything in that house. So all the things that I'm gonna be doing in that house for renovation purposes and, and completely remodeling that whole entire, almost like a gut job on that house, you will see everything. Don't worry about it. We have plenty of stuff to come. So definitely hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the picture of a notification bell that will notify you every time I upload a new video. And I will see you guys next time and I hope you enjoy this.